Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And tonight we are going to be doing something a little fun. Um, this is going to be a very interesting interview. I do not suggest for there to be any kids present. Um, even though we are family friendly, community friendly, and all about inspiring each other, this tonight is for adults only. Tonight is for adults only, so if you have children present, I would highly recommend, unless you want them to hear some adult things, <laughs> that I highly recommend you ask them to go in their rooms and play video games or to just uh, let the kids go play in a separate room. Because tonight is for adults only. Tonight we are going to be interviewing King Hef. And I will let him introduce himself because I feel like I'm not really going to give it the, um, how can I say, the grand uh, <laughs> entrance that he so deserves. Um, King Hef is a friend of mine. He is also a mentor. Um, he's a teacher. Um, he's inspirational. There are so many things about King Hef that you are going to love just as much as I love. And again, tonight is different. We are not only talking to someone that is inspirational, but he also is a relationship expert, a sex expert, and so many other things. So I hope that you will enjoy tonight's interview on the Speak Up and Inspire series with King Hef. So we are going to bring him on the lines very shortly. But until then, what I want you to do is to get comfortable. If you have a spouse, a lover, homie lover, friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, bring them with you. You want them to listen in on this interview tonight. Again, we are going to be talking to King Hef live right now on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So join us. Look forward to next week. We are going to be talking to Nuff Said, the comedian and ultimate host. And so we're going to be laughing all month, all month, talking to these outrageously inspirational men. Tonight, we're going to be talking to King Hef. So I'm going to bring him on right now. Please join us. Take, take a seat. Get comfortable. And get your questions ready, because I'm sure you're going to have plenty of questions um, once we get started and you uh, find out exactly who and what we're talking about tonight. I'm going to bring him on right now. While we are waiting for him to join us. I want you to let me know what kind of questions do you have um, when it comes to relationships, um, especially when it comes to intimacy, intimacy, drawing closer to your, your partner, um, getting to know your, your partner on a very intimate level. What are some of the questions that you have? How long have you been in your relationship or how long have you been in your, say, what should I say, situationship? sex ship, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> We're going to be learning so much tonight from King Hef, and I hope that you are going to learn something tonight, but not only that, but start following him because he does shows, he does um, private parties, he does seminars, he does so many different things. So please get your questions ready to ask you can ask in the comments. I will make sure that I will be checking in on your comments so that we are answering all of your questions tonight as we have our very special guest, King Hef. We are waiting for him to come on. And while we are doing that, please make sure that your children are not listening in tonight because tonight is all about adults. It's all about relationships. It's all about intimacy. It's all about so many things that children do not need to hear tonight. <laughs> but I promise you, it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal um, interview. And I've been looking forward to this all month, to be quite honest. Remember, next month, we are going to be talking to Nuff Said, the comedian and ultimate, ultimate host. And you can look back at the Speak Up and Inspire series page. Um, like our page, follow our page, follow us on YouTube. Um, we talk to different people in the community every single week. 
Um, last week, we talked to Jonathan Coleman, founder of Blacktopia. And then the week before that, we talked to Cedric Sanders, founder of Framly and owner of 303 Creatives. So join us while we are waiting to uh, connect with Hef. Make sure that you like our Facebook page so that you can find out who we talked to already in the past, but who we're going to be talking to in the future, such as Nuff said. Delvon, who is a teacher, he's going to be starting up our Teachers Month next month in the month of August. So we have so many people that we interview, some great people that we interview, and we want you to be here to learn about the people in our community who are doing great things. Hopefully we will have King here with us very soon. I see that he is watching, so we are going to wait for him to get online. But again, while we are, go ahead and put in the comments. Are you single, married, divorced, separated, in a situation, something, you know, tell me. Tell me what it is. What kind of relationship are you in? Friendship, marriage, divorce, separated. This is all about relationships tonight. It's all about enhancing your relationships tonight. So I'm doing a survey. Tell me. What kind of relationship are you in? And honestly, it really doesn't matter because tonight you're going to learn something. I promise you. All righty. We are still waiting for him to come on. Hi, Sharisha. Hi, Katrina. Hello, Tony. Hi, Clarissa. Hello, Quinn. Hi, Lakeisha. How are you doing? Hi, Jonathan. Hello, everyone. We are waiting for Mr. Uh, Mr. Heff to join us. He told me not to call him that, but I can't help it. I'm just giving him respect. I see we have a couple of married people that are watching. Thank you very much, Ms. Teresha. Thank you, Quinn, for letting us know. If you are single, married, divorced, separated, in a situation, let us know. Because tonight is all about relationships. We are waiting. And for some reason, we do not have him on here. Give me one second. Again, continue letting me know. If you are in a relationship, what kind of relationship is it? Are you married, separated, committed, girlfriend and girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is you got going on, tell us, because tonight is all about relationships. Mm. All right. Hold on. I think we have him. There he goes. Hey. <laughs> uh, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I, I was running out of things to say while we were trying to get you on. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, I was just like, uh, what's going on? You know what I mean? Hold, hold one second. <laughs> No all right all right awesome awesome well i told everybody to put the kids away put put them in the room so that we can have some some adult talk tonight um so i wanted to bring you on tonight because we talk about a lot of people um in the community doing great things and i wanted to include you in talking to men in the community who are doing great things because i believe that you're doing great things um i've been following you for a couple of years um i i love what you do i respect what you do and um i really think that what you're doing is empowering especially mm -hmm. for couples and so i wanted to have you on and for some people tonight, it might be different. So we're gonna kind of slowly bring them into this <laughs> to just talk about who you are, what you do, and um, get wound up here to um, just get to know you as an entrepreneur sure. and a business owner. Okay? No doubt, no doubt, I awesome. got you. Awesome, all right, so um, Hef, tell us. Um, we know that you, no, sorry. King Hef, King Hef, King Hef. <laughs> so I've told King Hef that I am very hard to tame, so I'm working on it. <laughs> 
So, I, King I get it. I get it. I, 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 um, um, hold on. I, I, I hear it's like it's running in the background somewhere else. Um, no, there's nothing else going on here. And we are on a live feed, so there shouldn't be any interference in the back. Uh oh, we're stuck. We've frozen. All right, so while we are trying to work out the, the kinks, literally working out the kinks, <laughs> I want you to continue to continue telling us um, what it is, what kind of relationship you're in. Are you married, single, in a situation, in a relationship? Is it committed? It is it committed? It. <laughs> complicated status what does that really mean is it people that just dealing with each other until they find something else are they sick and tired of each other but they're staying in the relationship what does that really mean when you see that as a status in a relationship it's complicated what does that mean i have no idea what that means we are going to try to bring king hef back on live with us so let's see if we can do this because for some reason we got disconnected So let's see if this works. Uh oh. All right. Okay. There All right, we go. we're back. Okay. I don't. For, I so for some reason. I was I was hearing like two feeds right right so I don't okay. know if it was it was I don't know if it was because I I started a watch party on the other end right maybe that was it who knows I don't know it could have it been can you hear me now nope. I can hear you perfectly right now okay awesome so okay. I've done about a hundred introductions for you because I really don't know how to introduce you because I think you're just an amazing person no um, so we're gonna just jump right into it. Right. Um, King Hef, as you uh, you love to be called, and you have respectfully earned that name. Tell us the person behind the name. Let's start off there. All right, good. Well, my name is King Hef. Um, I am the owner and creator and CEO of the Hef's Lifestyle. I also am the creator of Pink Hef's, aka the Vagina Vitamin. Wow. Hold, hold, hold up. Hold one second. Leave for now. Okay. All right. I'm also the uh, creator of Pink Hefts, a.k.a. the Vagina Vitamin. And I'm also the creator of Black Hefts, a.k.a. the God Dig Vitamin. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. No doubt. Yeah. So this is what happens. All right. So I'm, I'm going to try to ignore the fact that I have a watch party going on at the same time. <laughs> and. And I'm going to focus on my conversation with you, and and that other part is in the back. All right. So, okay. so also I also created a seminar series called the Sensual Art of Impact Play, where I teach single people and couples and and married people the importance of adding sensual BDSM and kink to their lives. Y'all got that? Say that one more time. What are you teaching? <laughs> I teach I teach single men single mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. and couples, how to add some sensual BDSM and kink into their lives. Yes. Right. And I'm also mm -hmm. the ambassador of debauchery and nasty motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. now that you gave us a whole mouthful right there, mm -hmm. tell us. When it comes to you teaching singles, what do you mm -hmm. focus on? Because we do have someone that are watching right now that are single. Mm -hmm. What do you focus on when it comes to singles? Well, the main thing is about boundaries and consent. Boundaries and consent are very important. Whether, whether, whether it's singles or whether it's couples, boundaries and consent is about respecting boundaries and consent always, right? Because whether you're single or whether you're married, you have to ask consent first before you do anything. Like it's just asking and you have to respect boundaries and you have to respect consent, right? Cause consent is sexy. Right. It is. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely so. Yeah, okay. very much so. Now, I would assume that you would teach the same thing to married couples as well, correct? Oh, definitely. Hell yeah. Yeah, because what happens is no matter the level of relationship, whether it is whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you whether you polyamorous, polygamous, polyandry, all kind of levels of relationship on all levels, you have to respect someone's boundaries, right? Like if your boundary is no cream cheese on my thigh, right? If that's your boundary, then if I put cream cheese on your thigh, now what I'm doing, I'm violating your boundary, right? I'm crossing a line which you're not comfortable with, right? And that's, and that, that's very disrespectful, right? Because, because realistically, nobody really teaches us. There's no master class on how to treat the opposite sex and how to deal with the opposite sex, right? No, it, it's all trial and error, right? We may get some advice, but in everyone's life, it's trial and error, right? So now what you have to do, you have to be concerned about how you're going to go through this life and through this existence, asking what boundaries are and respecting those boundaries. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for me, um, and people that know me personally, this is not going to be any surprise that I am interviewing you. Um, mm -hmm. Because I believe that um, all relationships, especially intimate relationships, should explore a lot of different things together. Um, nice. I believe that when you are with your partner um, in an intimate relationship, that you do what you can to please each other. And part of that, for me, has been um, exploring BDSM and, you know, kink mm -hmm. lifestyle. Um, that yes. works for me. That works for a lot of people. And some people don't know about it. Some people don't understand it. Um, but I think that it's one way that you can keep the romance in your, in your marriage, your relationship. Mm -hmm. I also believe that it keeps your sex life spicy mm -hmm. and going. Yes. Um, so that is one of the reasons why I wanted and felt that it was important to have someone like you to educate about what kink and BDSM and so forth is because most people that don't know about it, they think that it's, it's, um, it's, it's painful, that it's hurtful, that it's degrading, that it's disrespectful when honestly, it's really about respect and love for each other. Yeah. Yeah. That you need. Yes. So, that was yes. one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some other misconceptions that people um, have when it comes to kink and BDSM? Um, when... Well, one of, the, one of the things that a lot of, especially especially Black people, right? And I'm, I'm just going with this, right? It's because we as Blacks, we, we, we are very sexually repressed, right? And a lot of it has to deal with the way we were brought up, right? A lot of us were brought up in the church, and we were, we were brought up to be ashamed of our bodies, right? And to be ashamed, and sex, sex was an act to be ashamed of, to not be talked about. But, but people were steady having kids and bringing kids around, you know what I mean? Right. And, so, and so what happens is, uh, one of the most misconceptions is, that's white people stuff, right? They be like, oh, that's white people stuff, that's nasty. Don't touch me, don't do that, don't do that. Wherein it hasn't come to a point where People are, people are, let me see, I say this right. People don't worry about what other people think about what they do in their private lives, right? People are too worried about how other people see them in their lives, right? Right? People are always the fear of being judged by others, right? When the most important person that you need to be worried about is the person that's staring back at you in the mirror, right? Not your mama, not your auntie, not your grandma, your uncle, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your best friend, your man, your lady, right? You, you, people have to really, really focus on self, right? About loving self, about trusting self, about caring for self first. It's nothing wrong that if you have children, if you have children, I'm not saying that you have that you don't make your, your children or your significant other or anyone else in your life less a priority. But when are you going to start making you a priority in this lifetime? Right. Right. People don't people don't do that. Right. So when it comes to stuff like BDSM, kink, um, different type of nasty stuff. Right. People be like, oh, I'm freaky. I do all this stuff. But um, 
<laughs> a lot of people don't know what it is to be na to be na to be nasty. You see what I'm saying? Like if, if someone told you to open their mouth, uh, open your mouth and let you spit in their mouth, you know what I mean? Like how, how could you receive that? Right? right? Or have or having someone or, or being or have someone's consent to to slap them in their face, right? In a pleasurable way, from a loving space, right? From right. a loving space. So the main thing about about kink and BDSM, you have to do it from a loving space, from from a loving heart space, right? If you if you have a bad day or you're feeling very shitty about yourself, you may not want to engage in any kind of play, any kind of play scenes or sessions with anyone as far as BDSM, right? BDSM is isn't always about spanking. It isn't always about choking, right? Which mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's all about spanking, choking, goddamn, you know, you know, they think it's about that, right? But it's more than that. BDSM is a lot. It, it, it's just like everything else. It's a lot, it's it's very mental, right? That's why you use stuff like blindfolds. You use hoods to sort of to sort of have like sensory deprivation, right? Where you take away the eyesight, where you take away, where you take away the hearing. So all they're focusing on mentally is the anticipation, the anticipation of what's to come, and 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 focus on what's actually happening. You see what I'm saying? Right. Um, so that's so yeah. I, I, I'll stop there so you can ask some more questions. I'll, I'll be there <laughs> talk. I, I, I'll keep talking and I'll take yes. over the show. <laughs> yes. OK, so I heard everything that you said and about how everything that happens between you and your lover or you and your your sub or whatever is coming from a loving space. Mm -hmm. But that but that takes one word for me when it comes to exploring these things with your partner for me it's mm -hmm. all about trust so can you talk about that a bit please all right so <clears throat> what happens is in order to come from a trusting space right um each and every individual you, you have to be able to establish trust okay so i'm gonna I'm I'm give these three principles that i teach at my seminars right um especially when it comes to women Right. And men, men, this is this is for men, too. But we're mainly talking about women. Right. Women deserve women deserve to feel safe. Women deserve to be protected. Right. And women deserve pleasure. Right. So safety, protection and pleasure. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's if you if a woman is not safe, if she if you don't feel safe, if the women don't feel safe, you can't. You, it's hard for you to trust someone if you don't feel safe, right? Mm -hmm. right? Right? If you if you don't feel if you don't feel protected, you can't trust that person. True. Right? True. So so the, the, these are the things that have to be established up front before you before you even delve into this, right? You you have to be able to trust that this person will not hurt you, right? That this person will not ultimately let you die. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That okay. this person, that this, that trust that this person really cares for your pleasure and your pain, right? right. That's what it's about, and and th th that's something that has to be established. Like, um, I know for me personally, it all starts within self, right? There, it, a lot of things that I'm gonna talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is about prioritizing and loving self more, right? But most importantly, you have to be able to trust yourself, right? You have to really fully trust yourself before you go down this road, right? Because when you trust yourself first, like ultimately trust yourself, you can, you can attract people that you can trust. You can attract situations that are more trusting, right? Mm -hmm. If you're sort of, I don't really trust men or I don't really trust women, but how are you gonna trust someone to choke you properly, right? Mm -hmm. And to not hurt you, right? How? how how can you you can't and just because you buy some you you just because you see some stuff right you may see someone at, at, at a dungeon or you may see someone at a at a play party or a private party do something right you can't say you know what i'm immediately you can't say you know what tiffany i'm immediately do that to you upstairs come on upstairs i'm gonna I'm spank your ass like king hef did but <laughs> but 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 you, you, you see what I'm saying? But but if you're not really comfortable, if you're not really comfortable and trusting of me, you're 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 not gonna be able to relax fully and get into it, right? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be able to to allow yourself to fully let go. Right? Mm -hmm. You you can't because 
BD, with through BDSM and any kind of sensual art, you have to be able to do to do the proverbial fallback and and know that that person is going to catch you, right? Know okay. that you can know that you can float, and the person is not going to let you drown. Right. You feel me? Yes, I definitely do. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 through that, you have to through that you that's how you're able to establish trust, right? Uh, one one of the most wonderful things that that I that I do is I'm able to establish immediate trust with someone who I don't even know, right? And this is a lot of times when I'm whether I'm doing a performance on stage or whether I'm doing any kind of demo at any kind of private event or even private sessions. The the the, the submissive or the demo bottom who I'm currently with at that time, they automatically know. I tell them. You're safe with me. I'm here to protect you and your pleasure and your pain are my number one priority. Mm -hmm. That's that's and, and I look you in your eye and I'm telling you these things. And I and I'm and, and it's all about the touch, right? It's all about the touch and the voice. I can't just come up to you and be like, hey Tiffany, whisper in your ear. I'm gonna tell your ass. I'm gonna tear your ass up tonight. You gonna be like, what? Get, get ready. Get ready. You ready? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, to just share a little personal tidbits, because I feel that it's important for for people to be comfortable. They have to know someone that is comfortable in this environment. Um, and again, I'm comfortable in this environment because for me, it's about um, being submissive to someone that you trust. Um, mm -hmm having um, an, an experience that you might not have experienced with anyone else. Um, but also because I feel that as the sub that I have been before, that I'm really the one that's in control mm -hmm. and being in control over my body and being in control over what I want um, is important. And this comes from a space of me. Um, I've been raped before mm -hmm. and um it was very important to me that when I started being um, active again, that I was with someone that I trusted um, and that I chose the person that I trust. That I trust. That's, that's correct. Um, that's correct. So being in, in the a relationship or um, situation, whatever you want to call it as a sub to me, it was my way of saying, I, I trust you. I give you permission. Um, and that that person understands the, the um the privilege that is yeah. to yes. be my dominant or That's allow correct. me to be their sub. So can you explain that to people for people that don't know the roles, the dominant and the sub? All right. So BDSM stands for bondage. It's it, st it stands for dominance, um, and sadomasochism or slave master, correct? So mm -hmm. th those are those are the things. So the thing is, um, or you could be or it could be dominant or submissive. So in, in BDSM, you have a dominant and you have a submissive, right? Like you just heard her say, you have a dominant and a submissive. Like you can't have two submissives in a play scene, just like you can't have two dominants. Somebody has to, you, you, you have to do the roles. Sometimes you may have a situation with the right partner that you can have a switch. And a switch is when the dominant becomes a submissive and the submissive comes, becomes a dominant, right? But... <laughs> All right. So, but, but, but the one important, one, one of the most important lessons that I've learned, right, is that submission must be earned, right? Like you can't, like me as a dominant, I can't come to you and be like, you're going to be my sub. No, a dominant can, a dominant can't ever tell a woman or, or a film dom can't ever tell a man that you are going to be my sub, right? That's right? true. Mm -hmm. Like, like they, they haven't earned the right for that, right? Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of times in this, and one of the things about this is a lot of times you, 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 ha you have men and you have women who have dominant traits, right? Mm -hmm. So they feel that, they, that I see someone I like, right? And I want to bring them in this lifestyle. And you know what? You're going to be, you know, you're going to be my sub, right? Now, mm -hmm. you, you're not, the, the person who, who you with wanted to be the sub with, you didn't ask them if that's what you wanted to do. You can't, you can't ask for someone's submission, right? Mm -hmm. You have to earn it. Mm 
right? And submissions should never be expected. And this is especially key for married couples, right? Mm -hmm. Every single people too, but most, most importantly, married couples is just because you have these kind of roles and you want to explore down this road, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't just automatically assume that, that you my submissive. You can't do that, right? You can't do it. You have to earn submission, right? And it's, 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 a, it's a very important thing because the submissive, like you said, is, is very much in control doing any placing. That's why you have stuff like safe word, safety words, right? You have a, what's your safe word, right? Get, give mm -hmm. me a hand signal, right? That just in case you can't be vocal or you have a ball gag on, like a, a hand signal, like it may be like this, right? And as a dominant, you always have to pay attention to your submissive during a play scene, like pay attention to their body, pay attention to their whole entire being so you know when you have to stop, right? Because they may, like, they may be in something what's called a subspace, which I sort of call like a, it's like a deep, deep meditative orgasmic state, right? Pre-orgasmic state where, where, they, where they're going, right? You have, to, you have to be able to know how to get them there and not let them go too deep in it, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you, you, sometimes you have to stop and bring them back. Are you right. okay? Yeah, and, and as a dominant, you have to always ask questions. One of, the, one of the things I always ask during my play sessions and during my private sessions, and even when I do demos, I'm like, is this, is this just right or is it too much, right? Because I, I want you as a submissive in the bottom to let me know, just right, sir, or too much, sir, right? So now I know how to adjust it. Now I know how to adjust the aftercare how to teach the bottom and submissive the right way in order to take them to the direction that ultimately I'm, I'm looking to take them. Right. Right. Now I think that everything that you're saying right now, when it comes to dom dominant and submissives can, even if someone walks away or stops watching this video and they say, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with that. One thing that they can take away the fact is that in every relationship, there has to be respect and there has to be trust Definitely. and that you have to be willing to explore things that please each other, whether you decide to try kink, whether you decide, decide to try BDSM, you have to have those qualities in your relationship period in order to be able to explore and please each other. So if someone stops this video and they say, you know what, Tiffany's crazy, that King Hef guy, I don't know what's wrong with him, they're sick, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's all about respect. It's also all about trust. It's all mm -hmm. about exploring each other. It's all about yeah. learning things together and doing doing new things together. So yeah. um, I felt, I feel the need to put that in there right now mm -hmm. um, because not everybody is gonna be about this this lifestyle not no, everybody no, no. is going to be you know willing to try something different with their partner mm -hmm. um my mm -hmm. husband i introduced him to it um and he enjoys it and it's something that um we've we've explored together and you know i'm a i'm a switch so i can be dominant and i can be submissive and we've played those roles with each other and it's one thing that has connected us on an intimate level a sexual level yeah. But even in, yeah. in, in our marriage, you know, just yeah. being able to communicate our needs to each other mm -hmm. is really important. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So when it comes to um, you, you've said a, a couple of things, how you, you ask, um, how you make sure that the person is okay, um, the way you talk to your, your submissive. Um, let's talk about that because that was one of the main things that I wanted to um, specifically talk to you about is how the dom speaks to the sub. That mm -hmm. I feel is really important to getting the, your sub to a comfort level, um, but also showing the respect, the care, the protection. Um, so can, let's expand on that a little bit. Well, once again, it, it, it's all about respect, right? It's all about respect. Um, and, you know, during this time, you, you have to really work on and talk about what words are you comfortable with me, with me saying to you, right? Are you, are you comfortable with me saying you're a nasty little girl, right? Are you cool with that? Or would you like to be called you are a nasty little bitch, right? With this, it, uh, and, and, and you can't just come off the top and be like, God, you such a nasty little bitch. You'd be like, what? 
a bitch. I'm not no bitch. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 so you, 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 so you have to realistically know what you're comfortable with. Once again, it's all about communication. You have to communicate these things prior so you know how to talk, right? You can't, you, 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 you can't, you know, sometimes you, God, you're my nasty little girl, right? Or, oh, you're my nasty little kitty. Or you're my, you, who's a nasty little, you're my nasty little pig, right? You know what I mean? Like, you have to know which, which way to take it, right? But most importantly, it's about the respect and how you use your voice, how you use your voice to, to, to allow your, your partner, right? Even just in regular dealings, right? Especially when y'all are dealing on an intimate level on how to talk to them in a way which helps carry them mentally to a, div a divine space, div a space of divine pleasure, right? Like, like one, of the, one of the most wonderful things that I do know is that about men is we do know how to talk ourselves out the damn pussy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, That's real true. talk. <laughs> That's <Right>? true. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes we men, we need to know how to, we need to learn how to shut the fuck up, right? And 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 do it right. Be like, oh girl, yeah, this this. No, 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 no. Just just use some soft words, right? Use some soft words, like. As, as you as you as you get into it more, just just whisper. You want to whisper affirming words to your submissive, right, ladies? If and this is not just men to women, but women to men, or men to men, women to women. No, no matter what 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 range you're in, right? You want to say affirming words like, "God, you're so you're so incredible. You are so magnificent. You are the most amazing mother in the world." Like just say say different things as as you say this. And then you say things like, but tonight you're all mine, aren't you? You're all mine, aren't you? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> oh, no, sir, I'm not, right? Right? Then, then you something, then, then you just, you just and, and during this time, you just, just, just it's, it's about the talk. It's about the positive talk in your ear, right? You know, like, I'm going like I'm going to choke you to death. You don't want to say stuff like that. That's those aren't things you want to say, right? But you want to be like, God, did, mm, I love choking your neck. Do you like the way I choke your neck? Mm, do you love the feeling the way my hand is gripping your neck? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, good good girl. Oh, you're such a good girl. Oh my god. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm. Would you like me to continue? Yes, sir. God, good girl. I will keep going. And so, 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 people, as you see this, you see that exchange. This is the kind of exchange that that you're having throughout this whole time, throughout this whole this whole just divine placing that you're having, right? Or play session. You, you. It's it's like a it's like a wonderful. It's like an incredible, like like drama drama filled erotic adventure that you're going on right because the one thing that we we have to understand is where the mind goes the body will follow right mm -hmm. so that's why so you, so you can't just do the physical and not be willing to deal with deal with the mental first right always pay attention to the mental right fellas don't say no dumb shit that's going to make her want to stop and be done <laughs> right Please don't. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, and and also also when it comes to communication, right? When especially when it comes to boundaries, right? Write some things down. The one thing that 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 you want to review are stuff like hard limits and soft limits, right? Hard limits are like hell knows. Soft limits are like yes. And then you you may have some things that are, or you may say what's green and what's yellow. Write some stuff down. It's stuff that's red, right? Some things are red. Some things are yellow and some things are green, right? You want to you want to go over all these things prior to your playtime, right? And that's even with regular sex. Like, what are you okay with? Like, you may like even just because I want just because I may want to put my my thumb in your booty, you may not want me to do that. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? You yeah. you 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 may you may have an aversion to anal play, right? Or if you want me to put my thumb in your booty, that's what you want. But but I have an aversion that I'm like, oh no, I ain't doing that, right? Right. You see what I'm saying? These, these are things you have to really talk about. Right. Like when we're having real conversations, especially when it comes to sex, 
stop having basic conversations, the same conversations we had in them junior high and high school, right? Like, oh, what's your favorite position? <laughs> mm, that's it? What, what else do you like? Like, tell me what you like. Right. Like, and, and let's always talk about things that you want to explore. Like, tell me some things you want to explore. Like, oh, honey, I would love for you to spit in my mouth, right? Really? Nice. See, there you go. But you, you're, you're not into that. But those are the things, those are the things that you talk about, right? So, mm -hmm. Someone may say, you know what? I've had this fantasy. I've always wanted someone to pee on me, right? I've always wanted that, right? <laughs> but, and vice versa, you may say, I've always wanted someone to pee on me. And if your partner is with it, they'd be like, really? Okay. We'll do it one day. Or if they be like, nah, I ain't fucking with that. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that, that's a hard limit for me. That's red, red, red. Then you'd be like, okay, cool. No problem, right? Okay, right? Cool. So, you know, it's, it's, once again, kink and BDSM will allow you through honest communication and writing stuff down so you'll know. You'll know exactly how to deal with regular things in your regular life, right? Even when it comes to your work. But most importantly, when it comes to dealing with your, with the, with your partner, and just your opposite sex, right? When, when you are dealing in that, you're able to come from a more honest space, right? About what it is you want, what you desire, what you need, right? Things you're cool with, things you're not cool with. But most importantly, you have to provide a, a, a place of safety and protection. Safety and protection. Great things to have, right? Yeah. No matter what. Safety and protection, right? Because safety... If, if, if you feel safe, the trust is there. If you feel protected, trust is there. If you don't have safety and protection, there ain't no trust. That's true. Right? Right? And then you have to make the pleasure a priority, too. Not only your pleasure, not my, just not my pleasure, your pleasure. Right? Mm -hmm. mm. Your, <laughs> pleasure, your pleasure is my number one priority. So is your pain. Right? Your pleasure and your pain are my priority. Right. My goal is, is never my intention to hurt you. Right. Mm -hmm. If I hurt you, I hurt me. Right. And then, then we also have to be able to to recognize and deal whether we are in a kink session or whether we're in a regular, regular sexual situation. The times when certain traumas or triggers might come up and your partner may start crying. How are you going to deal with that? You have to be able to deal with the fact that sometimes certain things will spawn something in your partner that will allow them to start releasing and crying, right? You can't freak out. You have to be like, you know what? Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing and pay attention to them, right? <laughs> pay attention to, are you okay? Would you like me to hold you? It's okay. Let me know. In fact, you don't have to let me know. Just release it. Let it go. Give it, give it all to me. Give it all to me. Please. That's what I'm here for. I'm built for this. These are things, couples, single men, single women, that you have to, this is a part of coming from a loving space, right? Being able to let them know that you are built for this. You're built to be able to handle what they're releasing, right? This is, this is very key. Like, if they're crying, don't be like, oh, why are you crying? You okay? You want a tissue? Don't say those things, right? Because at, at that space, they're very vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. They are coming from a, a time where they need to release. Be there to support the release. Be like, it's okay. Cry. It's okay if, 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 you, if you slob and snot dripping. It's okay. Here's a towel. Let's, I'll wipe that up, right? But it's okay. I got you. I got you. It's no problem. And, and, and also, th these are one of the things that, that you let them know as you're talking to them in their ear softly. You be like, also... Give it all to me tonight. I got control of the car. I'm built for this. Give it all to me. I'm ready. To, I'll receive it all. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I can say that, um, you know, and I have no problem saying this, and I hope you don't have a problem with me saying it, is that, you know, I've experienced um, learning from you. Mm -hmm. um, and I always remember how safe I felt when you were, were talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, and because I do have trauma in my past, it's really hard for me to let go sometimes. Mm -hmm. And every single time that I've walked away from a, a session with you, 
um, I felt so much better because I trusted you to, to, to take on what I was going through. Um, every single time I think I've had a session with you at some point, my trauma comes out. Um, mm -hmm. I always feel safe. I always feel comfortable. I always feel protected. I know that you, I know that even though um, in the moment I'm part of your demonstration, I also know that you, you take it seriously, that you are protecting me and that even though there are other people present, you are not going to allow me to, um, to deal with what mm -hmm. I'm doing at that time by myself. Um, so, and I think, you know, as women, no matter, again, whether you, you explore this or not, that you still, no matter what, you should be always comfortable with your partner. You should always feel safe, mm -hmm. feel protected, and you should always feel as if you can let your emotions flow, that you should never be scared to hold those emotions back with your partner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's very important, no matter if this is something that you explore or not. Um, we talked about a lot of things tonight that you can just do with your partner even if it's not in the kink or BDSM way, but the trust, the respect, the communication, feeling protected, feeling safe and so forth are things that should be in any relationship. And I just want to keep reiterating that as we, you know, as we're talking tonight. Yeah. Um, I want you to talk to the men when it comes to how you treat your woman. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Let's focus on All that right. for the remainder about how sure. men should treat their women um, in relationships, whether they're the, the, the dominant, whether they have a submissive, mm -hmm. everyday relationships. How, yeah. Yeah. how do you train men? How do you train men? Um, well, one of the most important things that men have to, have to be willing to do is willing to heal themselves from their past traumas, right? So a lot of times, Women talk about their traumas a lot because you all are more expressive, right? You all are more expressive. But men, we're taught to, real men don't cry, right? Men don't, you know, you're not supposed to cry. You're being a pump, stop crying. And these are, these are things that would instill with us from when we're children, right? Stop crying. Why are you crying? You're being a pump, right? These are things that from older men, from our mothers, right? From our aunts, from our grandmothers. Stop crying, boy. You see what I'm saying? When we're hurt, Nobody values the times when we're hurt. Why are you being soft? You're being too damn soft. You got to be hard, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is very rarely have we men ever healed from our feelings of abandonment and not feeling enough from our mothers, right? right. And the second thing we never healed from was that pretty little girl that we liked on the playground or in day school or or elementary school, that real pretty one. And we, we were like, I, I want to talk to her. She's going to be my girl. And she just, and, 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 she, and she dissed you and went with the other guy. And so now you're in a state of, what? what? So now you're in a state of sort of making up for that in all your relationships after that, right? So mother issues, right? Feelings of abandonment, feelings of not feeling enough, right? That's not, I'm not talking about, Daddy issues, right? Not knowing your father. I'm talking about the feelings of abandonment from your mother, right? And not feeling that you're enough from your mother, right? So one of the things that I had to learn how to do years ago is I, like my mother and I, we had a contentious relationship my whole entire life, right? Um, you know, and our relationship is much better. But one of the many things that I had to do, I had to learn how to to I, I made a decision i made a decision tiffany to heal me right to work on me to learn how to love myself unconditionally right to trust myself fully right and deal with the issues that i had with my mother right so one of the things that really helped me was this 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 technique called eft which is emotional it's like it's called it's it's, it's a tapping thing right you have to and the one thing i learned as i was going through that is my life was still still being ruled by my eight-year-old little self now at this point in time i was 40 years old when i when i went through this i was 40 and at age 40 i was still allowing that eight-year-old little boy to rule my 
to rule me, right? Um, and once I was able to, to, to recognize that, I was able to kick his ass and kill him, right? I, he had to go. He had to die. In order for me to thrive and for me to live, he had to die, right? Mm -hmm. um, I had to get rid of, of, of the insecurities. I had to get rid of the jealousies, right? Um, I, had to, I had to get rid of feeling that, that oh my God, is, is, is the other guy got more money than me, right? The other guy is his dick bigger than mine, right? I, I, had, to, I, had, to, I had to get rid of all that shit all that shit, because none of that shit matters, right? What really had to matter was how do I feel about me, right? How do I view myself, okay? So then once I recognized and really accepted me for once, for the first time in my life, I was able to accept me, right? So once I learned how to accept me fully, now I could, I could, I could start to deal with women way differently, Right. I was able to attract the kind of women that I really deserve to have in my life. Right. I wasn't attracting no more toxic situations, no more toxic relationships, no drama. I didn't. Excuse, I'm sorry. I didn't have to lie anymore. Right. I didn't have to. I, I didn't I didn't have to, like, hide my phone from my mate. I didn't have to do none of that <laughs> shit. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to put I didn't have to put a woman who I met name in my phone as another guy. I didn't have to do none of that shit, right? right? So, but also what I had to also learn how to do, I had to learn how to be able to, to know that women are not my enemy, right? Women aren't my enemy, right? Right? right. The, 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 the situations that I put myself in, that's my fault. The one common denominator I always, in every situation with women, was me. Right. So I recognize the common denominator. OK. And mm -hmm. now it's about, OK, now. What are some things that I did that, that I that I continue to do wrong and I had to work on? Like, what's up, girl? Let me talk to you. Uh, I'm going to grab you on your arm. Come and let me talk to you, Miss Lady. What's up? Oh, like, why you, like, <laughs> like, why you like, like, why are you grabbing on me? Uh, let me touch your ass. Like what? Like, okay. no, because because mm -hmm. no, because nobody because nobody really teaches men how to conduct themselves with women, right? Now, the, the, now the one wonderful, beautiful things that my mother always taught me, and my aunts always taught me is you always open a door for a woman, no matter what. You pull her chair out, mm -hmm. right? Right. And not only that, the woman never walks on the outside of a man, ever. Mm -hmm. I don't care where we at. You always gonna be on my inside because I'm there to protect you and I'm there to keep mm -hmm. you safe, right? Right. So one thing that I, that I see now, and I, things I just notice on an everyday, right, is that men don't open a door for women. Mm -mm, they don't. Right? They don't open a car door for them, right? Mm -mm. And they allow women to touch the door. So even if, say you and I are out, and ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Fellas, y'all don't, don't say nothing. If you open a door for a woman, she still touches the door because y'all are conditioned to, to touch the damn door and the men don't check her men will be like why are you touching the door i got this like trusting me that i got you as a man don't worry about it but you know what i mean so and then not only that men they they let women walk on the outside of them you see what i'm saying and 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 number two men don't really give a fuck about their appearance no more right mm -hmm. women men really feel like it's just okay if i wear sneakers and a and a, and a fitted cap all the damn time Right, like it, it's it's okay that I look like I'm a rapper twenty four seven. I I I never I never take the time to dress up, not for her, but for me, right? Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Never, right. And, and and what I'm saying is, is that if you all if you all took the stance and say, you know what, you ain't getting no more pussy until you straighten up. Until you dress better, until you treat me better, right? It, it, like seriously, if y'all did more shit like that, then men would straighten up. But but men will only do what women will allow them co to continue doing. You see what I'm saying? That's that's what's that's what's gonna happen. So with men, I teach them how to respect a woman's boundaries and respect her no, right? 
Respect the woman's no. Right. right? Like, no, don't touch me there. Why you don't don't grab my ass. Like, don't don't smack my ass, right? Don't grab my titty. Don't grab my <laughs> arm. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. And then if a woman snaps back at you, fellas, if you're still grabbing on her, that you're not respecting her boundaries and you did not get her consent to touch her, right? Mm -hmm. In this world, that's borderline rape, right? But because, because nobody has taught men how to effectively treat women or deal with women in that way, we just keep doing the same shit we've been doing since we were goddamn 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. And we in our 20s and 30s and 40s, 50s, 60s, still doing the same old shit. Mm -hmm. The same old shit. The question I ask the men is, how's that working out for you? <laughs> how's that working out for you in your life? Like, mm -hmm. some, some people don't like relationships unless it is drama, unless it's a bunch of yelling, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Most people, right? Yes, you're right. Like, fellas, tell the truth for once. Tell a woman your intention up front, fellas. I teach men, let women know your intention up front. You don't want to always take every woman to the damn movies and dinner. Sometimes you, when, when your real goal is you want to fuck. Let's just be real, fellas. You really just want to fuck, right? That's, that, that, that's, that's real. Some, like, straight, just be honest with it. That, listen, you, you beautiful. I'm really attracted to you. But really, I just, I just want to have sex. And man, we have taken away you all's choice, right? We've taken away, we, we have taken away your ability to choose whether you want to deal with it or you, whether you not want to deal with it, right? Because no one teaches us about setting intentions up front, right? Just because you're having sex with a woman does not mean she's supposed to be your lady, right? right. Mm -hmm. I agree. That I, I, have, I totally agree with you. Um, I know that maybe the last five to eight years when I meet a young man, well, I'm married now, but when I was meeting people um, to date, that was one of the first thing I, I asked them, what are your intentions? What do you want from me? And I told him, I prefer for you to be blunt and straight and tell me the truth. If it's just sex, then fine. Let me choose to either have yep. sex with you or not have sex with you. That's right. If you That's want right. to date and you're not looking for a commitment, tell me that you're not looking for a commitment. Okay. I, I prefer blunt honesty because like you said, that gives me the choice to yeah, yeah, you know yeah. to go with you're right. not and that's, that's, right. that's just like this lifestyle mm -hmm. i know that I've, I've met men who are who are doms or they're polyamory um and they <laughs> and i've asked them because maybe i got a vibe from them you know are you poly are you this are you that and i've had men who have come straight out and tell me without me asking you know look <laughs> I'm, I'm polyamory i date more than one one woman um is that okay with you he, they gave me a choice for me to decide, okay, yes, I'm for it, or no, I'm not. But That's men right. have to, we ha just tell us up front, be honest. That's right. That's it, right. It, it avoids, it avoids in, infidelity, yeah. and yeah. it avoids so many, so yeah. many things and so many dramas and relationships yeah. that really yeah. don't need to be there if you're just honest yeah. from the beginning. That's right. That's right. And like I said, mo like men really have to deal with, really, fellas, you, you, you have to start respecting a woman's boundaries and and you have to get her consent i don't care if you've been in a relationship five years or 25 or 50 years you have to get consent consent is never assumed just because you're married doesn't mean that it's okay if you do that right at that time you might be you might be cool with your husband smacking your ass most of the time right <laughs> but sometimes sometimes you may not want it right right how, how about saying, how about saying, you know what, honey, do I have your consent to smack your ass? <laughs> that's either, that's either, that's either, that's a quick question. That's a yes or no. And, and whichever way you answer, we can't, we can't get in our ego and be like, oh, fuck you, what's up, man, damn. No, you know what I mean? But, but it's all about healing. Like, like women, y'all have these healing circles, y'all have these healing classes, fellas. At some point in time, be the change that you want to see in, in your world, not in her world, not in your kid's world. Be the change that you want to see for yourself, right? How, how, do, how do you want to see yourself for you? Not for them, not for your kids. How, how, you want, how you want to see yourself for you, right? You want to feel better about yourself. You want to feel more secure about yourself, right? How about that? Those are, those are powerful things to work on, right? 
um, it, it's really going to be a time where I'm going to start doing these, these, these seminars and courses for men to really, because I, I, I'm connected to an incredible, incredible amount of men who are really, who are really like me, right? Who really flow through this universe and this, this whole dynamic on surfboards, flow through here having great, great relationships, not only with women, but with ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. who are very who are very clear on what it is to be a sacred divine man and to be a real stand up type guy you see what i'm saying not no false bravado not just cuz you got money just cuz you got just cuz you got money money easy easy going to make you it's going to make you more what you already are right so if you are humble now but you get a whole bunch of money and you become an asshole that means you are an asshole without money you see what i'm saying <laughs> you, 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 you feel what i'm saying so the thing yeah. is and and, and and you have to, you have to pay attention to how you treat women, right? And you have to deal with your mother issues, fellas. I'm trying to tell you, you have to deal with your issue that you have with your mothers. Straight up, whether your mom is here or not, you have to get some therapy and deal with that. You don't have to have a conversation with your mother. You have to deal with that in a way. You have to find a professional, whether you do EFT, right? Um, whether, whether you do, um, whether you, whether you go to any kind of therapy, you have to, you have to go real deep and within to deal with that little, that little boy that's still ruling your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause that little boy is ruling a lot of men's lives out here and it's horrible. <laughs> it is. This it's horrible. And men are very emotional now. Like y'all, y'all women, y'all know this now, men in 2019, are very emotional. They take everything personal, mm. right? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah. They You're take right. every they take men take everything too damn personal. Like, God damn. I like, sir, I mean, I, like a lot of y'all men full of motherfucking estrogen out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Claim it claiming you want to be masculine, but 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 your ego is is full of estrogen. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Cut it out, fellas. Like, stop taking stuff so personal, right? Mm -hmm. If a woman don't, if a woman don't want to be with you, if she don't want to do something when you want to do it, don't you don't got to pout and be a make have a damn goddamn temper tantrum? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God damn, fuck out of here. <laughs> and, and, and 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 also, I let men know: stop sending women unsolicited dick pics. Oh God! Please, <laughs> yes, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> yes, thank you. Like, thank you for saying like, that. From me and the man. <laughs> like, yes. like just That's just like because turn off. you have no just, respect for yourself. <laughs> just because I just because I like your page, and I may say, "Oh, oh peace, queen. How you doing? You're so beautiful. Oh my God, this and this. Uh, blah blah blah." Don't immediately send her a dick pic. What's that gonna do? Like, what's that do? It does right. nothing. You're right. It does nothing. That 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 has as much value to her as a motherfucking tree trunk. All right. <laughs> I mean, I agree. really. I agree. I yeah. totally agree. I totally yeah, agree. You know, but 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 and 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 the thing is, fellas, what you have to work on is is make a decision sometime. Right. Learn how to make a decision. Right. When you go out with her, ask her, tell me what you want to drink. All these things. And when the server comes up, be like, order her drink for her. Right? What she wants. Don't order the drink you feel she wants. What you want. Right? Mm -hmm. If 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 you don't if you don't really want to fuck with vodka that night, don't 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 get her a Ciroc and damn cranberry mm -hmm. juice. Don't do that. <laughs> maybe you're in, maybe you're in a tequila night, right? Right? right. What kind of what kind of te tequila do you like? You like Anjo? You like Blanco? You like Respado? Tell me what kind you like. What 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 kind of whiskey do you like? What kind of wine do you like? Right? You may not be in a, a hard liquor mood. You may want a nice. You may want a nice uh, Chardonnay or something like that. Tell me what you want, right? But when the server comes, I got this. She she wants a Chardonnay. She wants this one right here. She wants. A, she's gonna have this meal right here. Right. Fellas, mm -hmm. it's 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 the little thing. It's the little thing, man, that you do that mean a lot, right? The little thing I, that means a lot. You're the right. Little things that mean a lot. I'm gonna tell you one thing. 
I love when a man orders for me. It's a turn on. <laughs> it's sexy, but then it also lets me know that you know about you know you know what I want, what I like, mm-hmm. and that that's the priority. And, <laughs> so and, 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 and 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 it, and it shows as a man that you care, right? It's true. Like you're just not thinking about yourself out here, right? Because um, right. too many times we we it's it's all about it's all about us. What we want, what we want. What, what about what you want, right? What do you want? Talk. To, what What do you want, right? And men, we have to learn how to support women's dreams. Support her, right? What mm-hmm. t- what, what do you want to do? Even if even if it's far fetched, don't tell her it's a bad. That's what, that's stupid. Why you want to do that? Why you want to quit <laughs> your job? That's dumb. What you gonna do? Mm-hmm. God damn. She she's coming to she's coming to you from from a trusting space that that you're going to support her. Support her. So, support just ain't about money. Support is about. Tell me what you want to do. What are your desires? Tell me, what what do you want to what where you want to go on a trip to? What's your dream trip? Once you find out your dream trip, make that shit a reality, right? I agree. But you have to. You have to. But man, you 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 have to know how to protect women and keep them safe, right? It's not always about goddamn protecting them as far as in a fight, but you best believe that. When it comes, she needs she needs to know that if some harm comes, that you ain't gonna goddamn run in the closet and leave her there, mm-hmm. right? Right? Yes, sir. You're right. You're yeah. right. Thank you so much, King Hef, for being with us. Um, You're welcome. Thank you for gone, having me. Thank you. We've gone over a little bit, so that means that I have to have you back on because this this conversation is not over with. So we have to schedule for you to come back. Okay. Sure. 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 Um, how can how can we find you and tell us if you have any events coming up? Um, well, I tell everyone I'm really not active on Facebook like that. Now I appreciate all the friend requests, but <laughs> you know I ain't active on Facebook like that. So I'm letting y'all know, right? Mm-hmm. The best place you can find me is on Instagram. Follow my Instagram pages at Pink Hefts, at Black Hefts, at the Hefts Lifestyle. Right? I have my personal page, but I, I'm 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 I very rarely ever give anybody my personal page on on Instagram, right? Because the, the, I, you 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 have to earn you have to earn act that much access to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but Instagram, Pink Hefts and Black Hefts and the Hefts lifestyle and on Facebook, like the Pink Hefts page, like the Black Hefts page. Um, Tiffany, if you can, can you put those those in the in the comments so people can read them? What yep. what a what a follow from um. And also um, coming up soon. Uh, suppose I'm, I'm supposed to be in DC this weekend for a um, for I'll be vending at this dungeon called the um, called the Crucible in DC at this at this event called the Whole Hive. But mm-hmm. most importantly, most importantly, next month in August, uh, I'm trying to think, oh, I, I, I'll be in Atlanta like the middle of the month for an event. Um, my, my, I had a seminar two weeks ago here in Charlotte, but I do have one coming up in in, in September in Raleigh and in um in, in um in Durham, North Carolina, and then I'll be at Exotica in Miami on September sixth. I'm oh, sorry, September fifth through the seventh in Miami. Okay. So, the, so, the, so, so the best thing to do is to follow anytime. Um, like even though even though I live here in Charlotte, I'm 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 very rarely in Charlotte doing events. So, um, so, um, you know, when I'm in town, when I'm in a town and I'm doing something, it's best to come out, right? No, but also if if you want to, if 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 you if you want to if you want to schedule any kind of uh any kind of BDS and thing with me as far as private sessions, I do offer private one hour sessions um on a personal one on one basis. You can you can send me an inbox or send me a DM on Instagram to find out what my rates are. Um also if you have a private event that you want to get together a few couples at, I will I, I will give you what my what my fee is to come out and, and teach a private uh sensual BDSM um seminar to your group. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So the one one most of one one important thing I want everyone to know is if you hit my inbox wanting advice, I'm going to send you my cash app and my PayPal and my Venmo. And you got to pay me first before I before we even have any kind of consultation. I'm letting people know what I got. What I have to share is not free. All right. All right. You can go yeah. on YouTube, get all the free you want. But if you want some want this knowledge, you got to pay straight up. Yeah. 
And gotcha. So Tiffany, thank, thank, thank you so much for, I'm so happy and grateful for you for having me on your platform. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you too. I definitely yes. do. Always. Yes. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone. I hope you learned something tonight. And if you take anything away from this, relationships, whether it's BDSM, kink, regular, normal relationships, we, you always have to have respect, honest communication, come start at a, a loving place as he calls it, which I, I adore so much and yes. just communicate, be straight up and honest, explore, yes. your, explore your fantasies and everything together. Yes, no matter what definitely. Lifetime you choose. So. That's right. That's right. And also Tiffany, before we go, I just want to let y'all ladies know, I know y'all heard me, y'all heard about the pages, but if I was you ladies and let them know, Tiffany, Go to pinkhealth.com, ladies. You you, oh, yes. need, you need to get you you need to get you need to get some vagina vitamin in your life, right, <laughs> fellas? <laughs> That's all I'm gonna tell you, right, fellas. If 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 you want you want the black health in your life, if, the the one beautiful thing about my products is they allow you to feel and experience what sex is supposed to be. That's it. Thank you, pink health. All right, baby. Get it. Yes. Yes. All day. <laughs> Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.